So here I am at the home of Hearts, Tyne Castle Park. I've got a Hearts video coming up today in this episode, obviously, that's why I'm here. And I do have a little intro to tell you. But firstly, there is a park that's open just here. I'm gonna have a look if I can get in. Hi there, how are you? Cool, no problem, thank you. Before I went in that little section, I thought there was uh, nobody there, but literally as I walked in, a uh, guy came out and basically said I can't go in. So yeah, it's time to stick to the original plan and uh, go to where I was going to tell you anyway. There's a few parts of the city that are very hearts related and yeah, I'm going to go around the front of the stadium and let you know what today's video is all about anyway. So this is the home of hearts. Heart of Midlothian, Tyne Castle Park. Currently in Scotland's championship, Hearts are in my eyes a victim of Scotland's strange league system where the top division, the Premiership, has 12 teams and the next three professional divisions have 10 teams each, so 42 in total. If you have a bad season, you can find yourself in a division that you don't really deserve. Now I know no team really deserves to be anywhere in football, but if you don't play well enough on the pitch, you're going to go down. Hearts though are one of three teams to have won four top division titles here in Scotland. The others are Hibs and Aberdeen who those three are on four and then they're only behind Celtic and Rangers who are obviously the old firm who have like over 50 titles each. Last time I was here it was a flying visit in Edinburgh to see Hibs and Hearts. Yeah I started off here at Tyne Castle before heading off towards Easter Road. Today I'll be diving deeper into what makes Hearts a football club. I'll have a snoop around the ground as I just did around there. I'll also have a look in the club shop as, as well as show you some key points within the city that kind of are a nod to Hearts as a club and as a team. Right, let's go and have a look around Hearts. But before we do, please do remember to like this video, subscribe if you aren't already, drop me a comment if you're a Hearts fan and I miss anything out. But yeah, for now, let's have a look around Tyne Castle, the home of Heart of Midlothian. Hello everybody, I'm sorry to have stopped your broadcast, but here is a message from today's sponsor buysellfootballshirts.co.uk buysellfootballshirts.co.uk have a huge range of football shirts on their website as you can see here from France to Saint Mirren to Hearts now this is a Hearts video so let's just check out the Hearts range that they have but yeah look at this from a few of these older retro ones here all the way through to some of the more modern shirts Hearts have got some great kits and buy sell football shirts stock so many of them and you can see look at this how many classic shirts they have from years gone by these are all legitimate shirts guys and they're absolutely class and I'm sure there is one for you on the website if you use the discount code footy10 you can get 10% off your order. The first link in the description box below is to their website, so please do go and check it out. Use discount code FOOTY10 and I would really appreciate it. Cheers. And currently here, right outside the stadium, next to this big heart mosaic on the floor, right in front of the sign of Tyne Castle Park up there, is a memorial here, sadly, to the death of former Hearts player Marius Zaliukas, the Lithuanian international who played here for Hearts as well as for Rangers and Leeds amongst other clubs in Europe, unfortunately died recently due to motor neurons disease and you can see here the support that the Hearts fans have given the player outside their stadium. A sad yet very touching tribute to the former Hearts man. And so I will be taking you to somewhere that commemorates the McRae Battalion later on. But this is a little, yeah, sneak peek at what's coming. This is a plaque to honor some players from Hearts and pretty much the whole team who actually signed up to fight during World War I. And this plaque is here, right at the side of the stadium to commemorate those that fought and lost their lives who also played for this football club during World War One. But I'll be taking you to a memorial somewhere closer to the city shortly to tell you more about this. Turnstiles that have obviously remained shut for a very long time now. Such a shame. And it says there's a cafe around here. If it's open, we'll get a coffee. If not, we'll just have a quick look in the club shop. Club shop looks quite big, actually. Looking forward to having a look in there. Let me just see if the cafe's open. What are we thinking? No. And look here, the nice touches and attention to detail. You got like hearts right next to the heart stadium. But 
I just found out from that man over there, who uh, is a volunteer here at the club, that neither the cafe nor the club shop is open, even though the club shop looks open. Why on earth is the shop only open Thursday, Friday, Saturday? People would still come and buy heart stuff and other shops are open. Anyway, Tyne Castle, this is all we can see for now, unfortunately. I tried round the other entrance, I've tried the front, I've tried the cafe, I've tried the shop. But um, yeah, I hope the uh, plaque was interesting, the memorial to the player was interesting, as well as just a quick look at the stadium. But for now, I need to head somewhere else because Hearts isn't just about Tyne Castle. There is so much more connected to this great club that I need to show you. And actually, one of them's quite close. So here you go, look, the Tyne Castle Arms, again, also shut. All Scottish pubs in the central belt are shut at the moment due to obvious reasons, but you can see up there the little players on the Tyne Castle Arms. Looks like a proper classic boozer right next to the stadium. I bet it gets rammed on match days, obviously not anymore, but as you can see, everything's shut, but Tyne Castle Arms, I bet this is a classic pub. And even in the clock, look, there is a heart right in the middle. This is the heart of Midlothian War Memorial in Haymarket. In 1914, pretty much the entire squad of hearts signed up in an effort to fight for their country in the war. This would have been World War I and it was recently Remembrance Day and you can see all the reefs here to uh, honor those who fought for our freedom. And as you can see there, it says erected by the heart of Midlovian Football Club to the memory of their players and members who fell in the Great War, 1914 to 1919. And yeah, look, you can see even the hearts badge on some of the reefs. And to be honest, I can't do it justice as well as the uh, hearts website. So here goes. And this is in honor to the McRae's Battalion. So never have so many owed so much to so few. Although these words were spoken by Winston Churchill in assessing the Second World War, the same applies to the conflict that preceded it. And this sentiment is well represented at the heart of Midlothian War Memorial, which stands at Haymarket, which is where I am just now. Back to the website anyway. In November 1914, the heart of Midlothian, with heart of Midlothian, sorry, comfortably leading the first division, 16 players removed their football boots for those of the army enlisting to fight in France. In doing so, they became the first British team to sign up en masse. They were part of the now legendary McRae's Battalion, the 16th Royal Scots, or the Provost's Battalion, the 1st Royal Scots, and fought valiantly. Nowhere was this more true than in the horrors of the Somme, where the British Army lost 20,000 men on the first day alone. This included three Hearts players. The example of Heart of Midlovian inspired fans and fellow professionals alike to answer the call of king and country. By the time the war concluded, seven Hearts first teamers had made the ultimate sacrifice. They were Sergeant Duncan Curry, Sergeant John Allen, Lance Corporal James Boyd, Corporal Tom Gracie, Private Ernest Ellis, Private James Speedy and Private Harry Watty. And to honour these men and many others who fought in both world wars, a memorial was, was erected in 1922. And it is pre presently situated here in Haymarket. Every Remembrance Sunday, officials, players and supporters of Hearts pay, uh, gathered to pay their respects. A very touching memorial here to the players of Heart of Midlovian, the Hearts players who lost their lives and an important part about what makes the football club tick. Anyway, and yeah, look, you can see there's some on the side of that one there, Africa, Gaza, some of the places that they would have fought. What a beautiful touching memorial this is on a beautiful day here in the capital of Scotland. Anyway, it's about time we headed on to another part of the city to see what makes hearts tick. And here it is coming into view now, Edinburgh's most famous site. Edinburgh Castle. Can't miss it when you're here. Great place. And it wouldn't be an Edinburgh vlog without me showing it you, even just briefly. Everywhere I go, I see football with the castle just up there. Here is a bench in the city of Edinburgh presented by the heart of Midlothian Football Club, 1953. There you go. There's something to do with hearts absolutely everywhere here. So St. Giles Cathedral, as a meeting place for the Scottish Parliament and other dignitaries, there once stood here an old toll booth or a tax house that once stood and was a notable landmark in 
the city here. It housed a prison that was demolished in 1817, but to mark the building that was once here, this heart was put in place of where the entrance for that building was. Since 1860, a heart has been here on the ground and has signified the entrance to where that building I was talking about once stood. A dance club of all things was set up here in the city and they used this area to practice in. And this heart became synonymous with that dance club. They were also known as the Heart of Midlothian Quadrille Assembly Club. It was this dance club as well as a mixture of young local lads that founded Heart of Midlothian Football Club a few years after the dance club was set up. And it was around this time that Heart of Midlothian Football Club, as we know them, were born. Well, that actually might not be true. The early stages of the club were a bit different to what we know now. Before football association rules came here to Scotland, Hearts of Midlothian, or Hearts of Midlothian, sorry, would have played a game that was more similar to a match of rugby mixed with football. So it wasn't the football that we knew today, the rules would have been completely different. It probably would have looked something a little bit more like Aussie rules. However, in 1873, Queen's Park and Clydesdale Football Clubs came to Edinburgh to play an exhibition match in which they used Football Association rules. And thus, Football Association rules and football as we know it today was brought to this club, Heart of Midlothian. It was in the years that followed that Hearts joined the SFA and the Edinburgh FA. And in the 1877-78 season, Hearts won their first trophy, the Edinburgh FA Cup against Hibs and it was actually the fourth replay of the final so they must have drawn three times before Hearts were crowned the winners and as an act of disdain to the building that was once here people would spit on this heart and I actually saw someone do it you can see it in the middle there next to that bit of gum someone actually spat on the heart but people nowadays do it for luck and it's become a sign of the city I'm not doing it of course because spitting these days is a bit stupid with what's going on but yeah basically that heart there on the ground is why Heart of Midlothian Football Club are what they are today. And even here, there's a nod to the toll booth. I'm not sure, I don't think this is where it was, but for some reason, yeah, the old toll booth tavern is like right there. And uh, it's obviously a nod to the toll booth that is now the thing of where the heart was, where I showed you earlier, but yeah, another nod to hearts. They're everywhere. So hearts are more than just Tyne Castle and a football club that play in the championship in Scotland. All around Edinburgh, there are nods to the football team. From the heart on the floor by which they're named, all the way to the war memorial that I took you to earlier in the video, to the bench. There are nods to hearts all throughout the city. And uh, yeah, it's something to be massively proud of if you're a hearts fan. Please do like this video, drop me a comment below if you're a hearts fan and subscribe if you aren't already. Do also remember to check out buysellfootballshirts.co.uk and use the discount code FOOTY10. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.